Hey everyone, today I'm at Memorial Park Cemetery in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I thought I would discuss someone that's played an important part of my life, even though I've never met him. And if you're an outdoorsman, specifically a fisherman, they've probably played an important part in your life as well. Let me show you who I'm talking about. We are in the back part of Memorial Park Cemetery near this lake. Very peaceful, very quiet. I've seen turtles and I've seen fish over here and then there's locusts and birds, all sorts of things like that. Very peaceful area. And I don't think there could be a more perfect setting for the person that we're gonna discuss today than this one. As you can see here, it is an outdoor mausoleum with quite a few burials. They all have a perfect view of the lake that's there. A little bit of nature in the city here. But we're here to see this man, Jasper R. Dell Hull. If that name doesn't ring a bell, what he's done for the fishing industry probably will. This is the inventor of the Zebco fishing reel, the closed faced reel that made it tangle free for every fisherman. So if you happen to be around before his invention, you dealt with tangled reels, whether you were using a bait cast or a spinning cast reel. I still use those, but they do backlash. Very rarely can you ever have any sort of backlash in one of his uh, Zebco reels. But one of the first fishing reels that I ever started out on one was one that my grandfather gave me. And it was the old Zebco 33. But this is where he is located in the cemetery. It's his final resting place. Viewing this lake out here. And like I said, I've seen a few birds out here, a blue heron is just right over here fishing and catching some fish right in front of him and it's kind of moved away from where i'm walk where i've been visiting and then there's some geese over here and more geese over there and i've seen some turtles out sunbathing on the rocks but he was a lifetime tinkerer and uh loved the outdoors specifically fishing it's something that he always did so Jasper R. Del Hole, better known as R.D., was born near Snyder in Scurry County, Texas on December 9, 1912. He was the third of Francis Amelia and William Jasper Hole's seven children. One died in infancy. He grew up in Scurry County and neighboring Fisher County in Texas. His father, who went by Jasper or Willie Jasper, was a farmer, watchmaker, and photographer. In the 1920s, Jasper moved the family to Rotan, Texas to run a photography studio with his brother. R.D. married 18-year-old Lula Bell Curley in Rotan, Texas on October 15, 1933. They had two sons together, Roy Lavelle Hole, born in 1936, and Jerry R. Dell Hole, born in 1941. They also had a daughter together but died during childbirth. Early in their marriage, R.D. worked in a gypsum mill and managed an orchard. He also learned watchmaking from his father. In 1943, he moved the family to San Angelo in Central Texas to work as a civilian contractor at the Goodfellow Air Base. There he repaired and installed Norden bomb sites in the U.S. bomber planes. It is likely that his watchmaking skills prepared him for that kind of detailed work rife with small parts and specialized tools. His skill set was valuable to the stateside war effort and made him ineligible to be drafted and sent overseas. R.D. was an avid fisherman and lifelong tinkerer. In 1947, he got the idea for a new fishing reel after he witnessed a butcher pull string from an enclosed spool. One of his first prototypes was made from a coffee can lid, string, wire, and nails. After several unsuccessful pitches to manufacturers in Texas and Oklahoma, the family found themselves in a pinch. They were staying at the Bel Air Motel on 11th Street in Tulsa. R.D. had just enough money to either put food on the table and pay the motel bill, or put gas in the car and try to sell his fishing reel to one more place. 
The place he wanted to try was the Zero Hour Bomb Company. Since its incorporation in 1932, the Zero Hour Bomb Company had become well known for manufacturing dependable electric timer bombs. These were used for fracturing geologic formations. They had designed and patented technologies for shooting wells and to increase the oil and natural gas production. The company's timer controlled a mechanism with a detonator in a watertight casing. The downhole device could be preset to detonate a series of blastings which set off the well's main charge shattering rock formations. So RD met with the Zero Hour executives. He carried a piece of plywood with a few nails in a circle wrapped in line. Attached was a coffee can lid that would spin. The executives were interested but insisted on seeing a working prototype went back to the motel and built one with an empty beer can and parts that may have come from his work on the Norden bomb sites. This could not have come at a better time for the Zero Hour Bomb Company. After World War II, demand for its electrically triggered devices had declined. The military no longer needed oil to fuel the war and the U.S. petroleum industry was in a recession and did not look so good. RD was hired on the spot and the world's first spin cast reel was born and it was guaranteed to never backlash. He moved his family to Tulsa in 1948 and worked as the head of research and development at the Zero Hour Bomb Company. The first standard spin cast reels rolled off the line on Friday the 13th in May 1949. It made its public debut at the Tulsa Sports Expo in June. By 1954, the real simple push-button system which is used today was introduced. As a result of the successes of RD's enclosed reel, several companies benefited from this. They included Ajax Die Casting, Blissett Manufacturing, Max Plating Works, Tulsa Screw Products, and Gardner Springs were all expanded or created. This further expanded the manufacturing industry in Tulsa during the 20th century. In 1956, a friend of President Eisenhower asked the company to send a reel to the White House. When the security saw the package labeled Zero Hour Bomb Company, they plunged it into a tub of water and called the bomb squad. This event prompted the company to officially change its name to Zebco. RD is credited for opening the sport of fishing up to millions of people. Zebco employed some 800 fishing tackle assemblers. A search of the U.S. patents shows that R. Dale Hull held or holds over 70 patents. 35 patents alone are for fishing reels, and he developed some 26 models of fishing reels. Some of his other notable patents include a 1965 patent that was issued to R. D. and his sons for a mechanical brush cleaner. This was specifically used for the removal of hair from hairbrushes. In 1966, a patent was issued to R.D. and Sons for a portable electric laundry dryer. The introduction includes the following. Travelers, particularly women, generally follow the practice each day during a trip of washing out their hose and lingerie. To dry the wet garments, the usual practice is to hang them on suitable supports about the bathroom or other places where they present an unsightly appearance and are often a source of annoyance or inconvenience. Shortly before his death, he filed for a patent on an automobile with a wind-driven generator, essentially a wind-powered car. The prototype was built on an old Renault, and it worked. Before the patent was even officially issued, one of the big three automobile manufacturers bought the prototype, all of RD's notes, and hauled everything away. The patent was issued to his widow. In the late 1960s, R.D. built his dream home on several hundred acres outside of Catoosa, Oklahoma. His home is really quite the sight to see. The 12,000 square foot round shaped home resembles a fishing reel. Jasper R.D. Hull was inducted into the Sporting Goods Industry Hall of Fame in 1975 for his more than 35 patents in the industry. At the time of his induction, 70 million Zebco reels had been sold. He retired from Zebco in January of 1977 after being diagnosed with cancer. He died in December of 1977 at the age of 64. So like I said, I can't think of a better location than this right here. He's just kind of out in the open, overlooking this lake, and if the fish bite or the fish jump, he's right here, overlooking the whole lake. I want to thank you, sir, for a big part of my childhood and still a big part of my life. 
can't tell you how many times I've used a Zebco reel, specifically a 33, but I know that there's other models I've used like a 404 and stuff like that. But these are good, dependable reels. It's a good one to stick in the trunk of your car or in the back of your truck behind the seat and just have it in case you happen across a good looking fishing hole, you got a nice dependable reel that, could, that you can do something with. But I've used these many a times, maybe set out two or three catfishing and stuff at night. But thank you, sir, for your invention. And I appreciate your contribution to the fishing world and the outdoor world. So since Mr. Hole played such a huge part in the beginnings of my life into fishing, and so did my grandfather, I thought no better way to leave a token of remembrance than an old rattle trap. Caught a lot of fish on these things right here. And since he loved fishing too, I thought that we would leave a fishing lure instead of flowers or coins or anything else. So, if you're ever passing through and you see that fishing lure, you know he's here. Jasper R. Dell Hole. Thanks for your contributions into my life of fishing. Here's some little mallard ducks swimming right in front of where his final resting place is. This cemetery is located in a busy area of Tulsa, but this back part right here where this little pond is and all the trees, it's very quiet and peaceful really for in the middle of the city. The big guy didn't like me getting near him. He was okay earlier. When he figured out I was following him, flew across the lake and has landed in that tree over there. Not too often do you see them in a tree. They usually just kind of stay up on the shore. Bunch of geese over there though. Figure he's safe up in that tree and I'm not gonna get him, which I wouldn't have anyways. These little ducks aren't afraid though, they just keep sticking around. They really don't care what I'm doing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. If you enjoy these types of videos, check out the other ones that I've done.